Hello student, today we are going to discuss another important topic from CHO5403 that is chiral drugs. So let's begin. So chiral drugs are an enantiopure drugs which are available in one specific enantiomeric form. Most of the biological molecules such as protein, sugar, enzymes, they are also present in one only one of many chiral forms. So Enantiopure drugs are called as chiral drugs. So let's see or overview the today's drugs which are available in the market. So friends, to avoid the complexity of this chiral center, 39% of the available drugs are achiral drugs. Only 18% have one chiral center. 13% are racemic and 30% 30 is multi chiral center. So, why we need to isolate or purify the pure enantiomic form? Let's see. As it started in 1950s, when thalamide drug is given to pregnant women for their morning sickness. The drug worked well with the morning sickness, but later on it found that the drug have very adverse birth defect in the children. That was called as the thalidomide tragedy. After that, many scientists, researchers work on purification of this two enantiomeric form. So they found that the S isomer is medicine, whereas IR isomer is a poison. After that, there are enantiopure drug synthesis are taken very dramatic change. So let's see what are the stereoisomers. As you know that stereoisomers are the isomers which have the different arrangement of atoms in the space and <coughs> they are also divided into very different types of stereoisomers. So friends, as we studied the stereoisomers in stereochemistry, I just uh, overview what type of isomers we have studied. So friends, we have studied enantiomers, diastereomers, epimers, mesocompounds and so on. There are a number of things we studied uh, in organic stereochemistry. Also, we learned the nomenclature of these isomers, like by configuration, we uh, name them as R and S, plus or minus, D or L, small d or small l, and by configuration, capital D or capital L. So, if we studying the chiral drugs, I will put two more terms in front of you. They are retomers and distomers. Let's see what are the etomers and distomers. So, <clears throat> as you know that the majority of racemic pharmaceuticals have one major bioactive enantiomer that is called as etomers. Okay, that one major bioactive enantiomer is called as etomers. And how about other? The other might be inactive or less active or sometimes toxic or sometimes it will give some different type of biological activity. So that activity might be desirable or undesirable. So that other form is called as distomers. So this uh, eudismic ratio is very important term for our chiral drug synthesis because this is the difference in pharmacological, pharmacological activity between these two enantiomers of that drug. So definitely this uh, eudismic ratio must be very very small. I will say it must be 100 as to 0 but sometimes we get distomers and their ratio affect our biological profile of our drug. So let's see some of the etomers and their distomers. We will discuss some inactive distomers, then we will see uh, some less active or uh, showing some activity distomers, some toxic distomers uh, that is causing adverse effect and some distomers with a undesirable or desirable pharmacological property. So let's begin. So first examples are of the distomers which have inactive effect. That means other enantiomer is not causing any activity. So uh, let's take first example. The first drug is yes atanolol. This is a beta blocking property resides in the yes enantiomer whereas R enantiomer is inactive. Similarly for the <coughs> leocytrazine, R enantiomer of citrazine is active and the yes is inactive. 
So levofloxacin, the S in enantiomer is active, and the this tumor that is R in enantiomer is completely inactive. Similarly, we have chiral inversions of this uh, ibuprofen that is a dex ibuprofen and then dex ketoprofen. They are also similar in nature. The next example, these three examples are of the these tumors which have some activity, uh, less active, I will say. So first is R ondesterone. So R ondesterone the more potent than the yes in enantiomer. That means yes have less activity and R will have greater activity. So uh, then again yes pentaprozole more potent than the R isomer. Then uh, again we go for the uh, yeah, isomeprazole. So uh, more potent than the R in enantiomer. Increased bioavailability, less pharmacokinetic variability. So this is how this R and S have some examples which have the less activity than is another isomer. Then some uh, some of the distomers which have antagonistic activity. So first example is R salbutamol. It's very uh, famous uh, drug R salbutamol. So you know that <coughs> this is a uh, used for the bronchitis. Its activity resides in the R salbutamol. Yes, salbutamol indirectly antagonizes the benefit of this R salbutamol. That means yes will reduce the activity of R. So in this case, we need to purify these two forms to for the better activity. That means we need only R salbutamol and it should be in a pure enantiomeric form for better activity. Similarly, we have R lipoic acid and other compounds. Okay. Now let's see the another example. We with that we have beneficial activity of this uh, another isomer. So you can see here. Uh, first example is uh, fluoxetine. So fluoxetine uh, drug develop uh, development of both in enantiomer for different indication in underway. So R uh, for the depression and yes for the migraine. So if we take the R form, it will uh, act as an antidepressant, and if we take S yes form, it will be the migraine. So both are developed for different biological activity. So uh, the other distomer have positive effect. If we take it with the R, the S yes will have again positive effect on the on its activity. So again, next is a uh, pro, uh, pro propanolol. So, is yes, propanolol has beta blocking and membrane stabilizing property, whereas R uh, has only membrane stabilizing property. The R in enantiomer may be useful in uh, hyperthyroidism. So, this is how both the enantiomers are useful as a drug. Now, the uh, last and very important um, set of uh, drugs in which another isomer or another enantiomer showing adverse activity just like thalidomide. So there are examples of yes amphilodipine, yes ketamine and then levobupivacin. So these are the drugs in which in first case the yes amphilodipine are in enantiomer thought to be a responsible for pedal edema due to racemic amphilodine. Okay. So yes have adverse effect <coughs> sorry R have are adverse effect and yes is a medicine. So yes ketamine also uh, same biomuscular property but are having adverse effect on the uh, 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 anti anesthetic activity. So then lastly the levobupivacin the cardiotoxicity predominantly associated with the R enantiomer. That means yes enantiomer is a very important drug but R have the cardiotoxicity okay so this is how the in etomers and distomers can be distinguished so friends uh, you have uh, this uh, example of yes ibuprofen and R ibuprofen uh, yes ibuprofen is anti inflammatory activity whereas R is not showing any anti inflammatory activity similarly uh, propoxyphene 
have same kind of activities so friends this is all about the dutomers and uh, sorry uh, ridomers and distomers and in the next uh, period or in the next uh, lecture we will consider the synthesis of some drugs chiral drugs so some of we have discussed in our slide so these are drugs are uh, propanol diazepam adrenaline omeprazole yes ibuprofen yes metoprolol and captopril so these drugs synthesis we will discuss in the next lecture thank you for today if you have doubt please feel free to ask me thank you